would now like to call the January 20th, 2021 Longmont Sustainability Advisory Board meeting to order. Could we please start with a roll call? Yes, we have um, Kate Collardson. Present. Mary Lynn. Present. Adam Reed. Present. Kay Volmeyer. Muted. She's muted, but she's here. <laughs> Charles Musgrave. Present. Uh, Jim Metcalf. Present. Um, Lisa Knobloch. Is here as well. She might be on yep, mute. Present. <laughs> okay. Annie Noble. I'm here. Uh, Francie Jaffe. Here. Um, let's see. Tim Ellis is coming in and Heather McIntyre is here. And no Polly yet. I'm off mute now. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> thank, thank you for realizing. <laughs> um, so when we have a quorum? We do have a quorum. Perfect. Um, so in our board packets, uh, we received uh, the board rules and regulations. Uh, did, does anyone have any changes uh, they'd like to discuss or suggest? No. Okay. okay. Um, and now I'm going to hand it over to Annie. Okay. Thank you. So I think I just want to check. I think you might need to make a motion, even though no one objected. Is that right, Heather? Oh, yes, I do. that's correct. Sorry. And I don't know if during this part of the um, board, during in the rules and regulations is kind of where our timeline for the meetings and stuff is set out. So I don't know if you guys want to discuss lengthening our meetings as we had talked about maybe in November or what you guys want to do with that, or if you want to bring it up at another time. Thanks for reminding us mm -hmm. of that. Um, what do folks think? Do we, do we want to move this to a two hour meeting? Could we give ourselves like make it two hours, but, but, um, but basically only when we need to go two hours, we, we basically end early at an hour and a half, unless we need to go, we just have it kind of built in. I'm, I'm fine with that. That's, I think that's how. It's almost how we're doing it today because we'll just stay until it's over <laughs> if we have to. Um, what, what do others think? I want to say there's lots of times that in the past where the meetings have been, it's one of those things I think where they kind of, they will take the time you give them. Um, so that said, I don't think it's bad to extend it and have it be a three to five and if we adjourn at 4.30 as a goal, usually that's that's good. And um, if we need more time a certain day, we can go further. But uh, I, I, I'd be willing to bet we'd take all two hours if we had two hours. <laughs> but Kay makes a good point. Um, I think three hours would make more sense if it was three to five rather than 3.30 to 5.30. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I... I, I I, I personally could make the three to five work, no problem. Um, that's that's easy, I think, on, on my end. I guess the question is whether or not uh, we feel that this year we're just going to start with a new year or if we still feel that we have a lot of things that we want to make up, in which case having an extra half hour makes a lot of sense. Um, it seemed that an hour and a half worked reasonably well pre the world falling apart. Um, but then we just have all these other things we've been trying to kind of cram together and, and make up for. Uh, so I, I don't know if it necessarily needs to be a permanent thing, but we, we might want to institute it for a while until we feel we've kind of like uh, put out fires and caught up on all of the th important things that we might have missed. Yeah, I'll second that. As a new board member, I feel like there's a lot of material to go over. And so I feel like it doesn't hurt to start out with a two hour meeting this year. And I also like the idea of going three to five versus 3.30 to 5.30. Um, if, if anyone, uh, does anyone object to um, the three o'clock start time? Because if not, then I'll just make a motion. 
I move that we schedule three to five and that we end whenever we're actually done before two hours. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 That's unanimous. I, I assume since Heather didn't say anything that the 330 would actually work from a logistical or three would work from a logistical point yeah. of view as well. Yes, we can make that work for staff as well. Heather has to be there anyway, right? <laughs> I do. It probably adjusts other people's schedules a little bit, but I think they would probably prefer that to the ending at 530. So I don't know, Lisa, Annie, you guys want to weigh in? Works for me. Yep, yeah, works for me as well. And to be honest, I appreciate um, the board's flexibility on that because I feel like there were a lot of times in the last three months of the year last year where we were really trying to get a lot of information out and it was really, I felt like the discussion was cut short. So I appreciate the extra time. I, I might have a little bit of trouble coming that much early to check my audio um, beforehand, but so I might only be able to come five or 10 minutes before the meeting starts. But I, I use Zoom for six or seven meetings per day. So I'm usually pretty good at making things work. <laughs> no problem. Okay, so I think this is where I take over, is that right? I, yes, I think. Okay, so we're on um, agenda item 4B, election of officers. So this is um, the time of year when you, you guys elect new officers. So this is the chair and the vice chair. And so, you know, I know we've talked about this in the past, the role of the chair is to keep the meetings going, to make sure everybody's heard and to get through all the agenda items and also to make sure that the public is welcome, is um, able to give comment. So at a high level, that's the role of the chair. Um, and I really appreciate all the work that Kate did last year and keeping things moving. It, it was, you know, we transitioned from having in-person meetings to having remote meetings. And um, I think we've done a really good job at like acknowledging and raising our hand and not speaking over each other. And that's been really helpful and being thoughtful about the time and that sort of thing. So with that, it's really um, up to the board, board members to decide on who you want to chair your meetings, but that is the role of the chair. So with that, I... Jim? Laura to the board. I'd like to nominate Kate again, actually, to be the chair. Um, we missed a whole pile of meetings in the middle, and I, um, I, I think that that would be a, a good thing to do. So I'd, I'd like to nominate Kate. Mary Lynn, can you, is that a second? Yep. Okay. Um, does anybody else want to weigh in? If not, you guys can. But I'll take the. Who's your Who's our vice chair again? Um, well, Violetta. Isn't yeah. Her? So maybe we should take it one at a time, but that's a good point. We do need to also. So, um, so, um, I heard a motion with a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 You're, you're Aye. stuck with this one, Kate. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Your confidence, y'all. The, 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 the curse of competence. <laughs> Yay. So then now let's talk about a vice chair. So the vice chair's role is to act when the chair is not present. Um, I nominate James. James. I second that. All right. Just all right. Any comment? Anybody want to nominate anyone else? Any thoughts? Balancing out the boy girl thing and longevity on the board. Okay. Nice. I like it. So we, have even a, out, we have to even out the hair situation as well. <laughs> <laughs> we have a motion with a second. So um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, so we have a chair and a vice chair, and I'll turn it back over to the chair. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, so the next item is a designation of a posting place. Um, so it's been recommended that we designate the city's website as the official posting location um, and that we continue to post hard uh, post a hard copy agenda for public information. Uh, 
Historically, we have designated the service center as the official physical posting place, but also we also post one at the civic center. So the what's before us then is to either to either keep posting hard copies at these places and use the city site website as the official um, place that we post uh, our our agenda is that am I understanding that yeah okay yeah so the um, city attorney's office um, has updated the staff uh, regarding the statute about all of that stuff and suggested now that the city's website which is the um, public portal that we've been using be the official designated space, but also continue to do a physical location in the event that the electricity or something is out, people would still be able to have notic notification of that meeting. And typically we do that at the service center um, as our posting place. So we could do that as a secondary one. We also always send one up to the civic center. So we would continue to do that as well. If that's what you all would prefer. Oh, by civic center, you mean town hall? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, just, with the physical ones, are both of those still accessible because of COVID things? Like, would it be reasonable for people to pop in and see those? They currently are open to the public, yes. Right. Okay, great. And if not, they're always posted in a window. Well, the ones at the civic center are posted in a window. So even if the facility was closed, they would still be able to see the agenda there. Cool. Great, thank you. Mm-hmm. And so we need to vote on this? Yes, please. Okay. Does anybody make I move that we continue as, as currently? Uh, I second Mary's motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And that was unanimous. Okay. Um, uh, next item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes from the last meeting. Uh, Anybody willing to make a motion there? I will move to approve the minutes from the November 18th meeting. I second that motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Abstain, I wasn't um, here. I wasn't here, abstain. Yes, that's what I'm looking for. Okay. But I you're muted, Mary. I have no objection to you guys approving the minutes, even though I wasn't here. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, I would now like to open it up for the public invited to be heard. Um, each person will, uh, wishing to speak will be unmuted to speak one at a time. What is your turn? Uh, please state your name and address for the record, and you will have three minutes for comment and I will be keeping time. So it looks like neither one of our guests have raised their hand to speak, so I think we're okay to move on. All right. Um, are there any revisions or documents to be submitted from the staff? Okay. All right. Um, all right, then we uh, will move on to general business. Um, I would ask the board members to please hold comments and questions until the end of each presentation after the staff has finished presenting. So Lisa, the floor is yours. Great, hi everyone. It's uh, really nice to see you all. It's been hi, Lisa. about six hi. months, I guess. <laughs> really well, welcome back. Yeah, welcome thank back. Thank you, thank you. Um, I have a tiny adorable baby around here somewhere. I'll grab him if my husband goes by, but um, yeah, happy new year to everybody. I thought before um, we get into uh, my presentation, um, unless you all have already done this, but given that we didn't have a December meeting, I don't think so, but we have some new board members and I thought it'd be great for folks to introduce themselves. Have we done that yet? Do you all know? Everybody, you have done that, and I just missed it. Okay, Kay is Great. the only one that is back, so she yeah, she and started in maybe January. maybe they I should introduce themselves to you, Lisa. Exactly. I was gonna say, that. I I don't know. I've not I've not met uh, Charles or Adam, 
So Charles and Adam, do you want to do a quick introduction? Um, Mind you, I guess I should too. And Kay, you should, yes, also. <laughs> <laughs> Charles is supposed to introduce the black fluffy cat too, he promised. <laughs> He's he's out and about somewhere else today. Uh, hi, good to meet you, Kay and Lisa. Charles Musgrave, a new board member starting uh, late last summer. And uh, I'm a um, scientist. I'm actually a computational quantum chemist and do research in the renewable energy area at uh, the University of Colorado. Good to meet hey, you. Great to meet you. Hello, my name is Adam. I'm also a new board member. I started in August as well, and I'm a scientist as well. And my background is in quantum information science, and I currently work in industry building quantum computers. All right. Thanks, Adam. Okay. Well, real quick, Charles and Adam, I, I'm Kay Vallmeyer. I, I work in environmental engineering and consulting. Um, so I have my own little environmental company here up in Longmont. Um, and uh, I, I've been on the board for two years with the exception of the period of time that you've been there. <laughs> uh, my first term expired in June, and I think I was allowed to be a guest in July for lack of having a chair. <laughs> but um, I, I am returning to the board again now. So um, I, I had a few months off and miss missed for the most part the last six months but i'm hopefully back for a couple more years and glad to see everyone <laughs> welcome back great thanks everyone um so i'm Lisa Knobloch. i'm the sustainability program manager and so I, I manage the sustainability program and i'm the staff liaison for for this board so i'm excited to get the year kicked off here uh, i do also want to announce that uh, violetta has had to step down she's um traveling for the next six months or so so she just sent us her her resignation so um i imagine we'll be getting um looking for somebody to fill her spot pretty soon. But Heather, do you want to share the presentation then? There, there we go. Great. Do you want, do I just tell you when to advance the slide? It's been, I'm a little rusty now on this part. Yes. Um, okay, great. So every, every format is a little bit different. So since it's our first meeting of the year, and because we do have a couple of new board members, although I know that we've sent you introductory materials and you all are probably pretty familiar, um, I just wanna really briefly go over the sustainability plan and the climate action recommendation report um, and highlight our priorities for 2021 and talk about a, a little bit of new approach to our work plan for this year. So you can move it to the next slide. I think it's helpful to just kind of ground ourselves in the sustainability vision. This came out of our planning process when we did the sustainability plan back in 2016, but just as a reminder from folks, this is really our, our touchstone that we're, all the work that we're doing is really trying to build us toward this engaged community that promotes environmental stewardship, economic vitality and social equity to create a sustainable and thriving future for all. Next slide. Oh, that looked nice. I didn't know it did that. Great. Um, these are our 10 topic areas that are covered in the sustainability plan. Uh, you all should have the materials from the plan and particularly the plan summary, which is a pretty good overview of the strategies that are in each of these topic areas. Uh, what I think folks may or may not know, because we haven't talked about this for a while, but when we did the sustainability plan, it was done very much in collaboration with Envision Longmont, which is the comprehensive plan that had sustainability and resilience as really critical kind of key components to that plan. And that plan is set up around these six overarching guiding principles. And then there's goals and policies within each of those um, principles. And all of the sustainability topic areas are tied to those principles and goals. Uh, I'm gonna have Aaron from Planning and Development Services come and do an update on Envision that uh, sometime early this year. That was one of the things that we had wanted to do last year that we didn't get to do because of so many meeting cancellations with COVID and then the focus on getting the climate action report uh, completed. And we will be, we have funding to update both the sustainability plan and the Envision plan beginning sometime this year. That'll go into next year as well. So it'll 
begin sometime in the latter half of this year. And we're still working out uh, how, how we're gonna be looking at integrating those plans um, and what that will really look like. But just so it's on your radar, we'll start that process at some point later in the year. Uh, next slide. So just as a reminder to folks, this is probably a little bit hard to see, but we do have the Longmont Indicators website that's available to highlight our progress that we're making toward meeting our sustainability targets along with the Envision targets as well. Um, this data is updated on an annual basis. It has 2019 data, but not yet 2020 data, but it's a good resource for folks if you really wanna see where we're at with meeting our current targets. Um, and, and as an example, I just pulled out the energy page here. So if you click on the energy icon, it'll show you the objective from that section of the sustainability plan. You can actually click on that link there and it will take you to that section of the sustainability plan. And it goes through all of our targets and indicators and metrics and our current data available. So I just wanna remind folks that that's a resource for, for people. Um, that if you want to dig down deep into where we're at with each of these things. Uh, next slide. And then I just want to highlight that even though we're, we're still pretty new as far as the sustainability program goes, um, we do have some notable um, progress that I just wanted to highlight in some areas that really are advancing us towards meeting those goals. And that's in the community area. One of our targets is increasing neighborhood initiatives. And we've talked to you all a number of times around the Seoul and Sustainable Neighborhood Solutions Program that we've been building with our community services department. Um, and those are really more moving forward pretty strongly and I'm excited to bring some updates to you later this year. Uh, the work that Bernice has been doing, particularly with the Sustainable Business Program, we now have 41 certified sustainable businesses, uh, 13 of which are minority owned businesses. Uh, the 100% renewable energy goal, we're just now just over 50% uh, reducing our waste consumption. So we've actually met our goal of reducing household trash consumption to less than two pounds per person per day. Uh, and then we are on track to meeting our target in water conservation around re reducing our water, raw water demand as well. So uh, we're we're doing well. Um, I think that we have a lot of exciting stuff happening. And as we get into those updates of the sustainability plan and envision, I think we'll be uh, refreshing some of those targets as well, especially some of those ones that we're really close to meeting or that we've already met. Uh, next slide. So as you all know, in addition to the sustainability plan, we also now have the climate action recommendations report, which have uh, developed recommendations in these uh, six topic areas with equity as a central component. It's likely that these will be incorporated in some way into those plan updates, but what that looks like is really yet to be determined. Next slide. And then as you all recall last fall, this was when I was out on leave, but um, Francie and Annie worked with staff from across the organization to evaluate all of the climate action task force recommendations with these different criteria and a number of different waiting scenarios to identify timelines um, for implementation of all 27 recommendations, as well as make some staff modifications to those recommendations for feasibility. Next slide. And this slide was part of what was presented to council in December that highlights the outcome of those waiting scenarios and the proposed implementation line timelines of each of those recommendations. So you can see the near-term strategies, uh, they identified 12 near-term strategies, those are marked in green, and those are things that will be implemented sometime over the next two-year time frame. so this year in 2022, and then midterm strategies, which are the 2023 to 2027 timeframe, and then there's a handful of ones that, that we identified as monitor over time, which just means that there are some pieces and information that we just wanna watch as they evolve. So not that they're, that we're not gonna implement these strategies per se, but there's other things that we need to pay attention to in order to determine um, if those are really the best course of action. Uh, next slide. So that proposal was approved. So Francie uh, just took that to council in early December and we're moving forward with the 12 near-term recommendations, which are listed here. 
Many of those recommendations are actually programs or projects that were already in existence or underway. Um, a lot of those were just an expansion of existing programs. Um, those are the ones that are marked here with the stars that you can see. The top five that are highlighted in yellow are ones that are already budgeted. Those are things that were already underway. Uh, the next three that are highlighted in pink are budgeted for 2021, but will probably also need some additional funding for 2022. And then the ones highlighted in purple uh, are the ones that staff applied for Boulder County sustainability tax funding for, uh, if you recall those conversations in the fall of last year. Um, so those will be happening in 2021. And then the unhighlighted recommendations are ones that are really gonna need additional research in terms of determining um, budget needs and how best to implement those. And then we're now in the process, uh, I just started this week of meeting with lead staff on each of these recommendations to get implementation plans underway. And we'll use that as our foundation for reporting um, back to you all and to city council. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute here. Next slide. So as you'll also recall, equity was a central component of the Climate Action Task Force recommendations and the Just Transition Plan Committee, which is now called the Equitable Climate Action Team, um, met concurrently alongside the Climate Action Task Force to develop their definition of equitable climate action to provide feedback to the Climate Action Task Force on how to best integrate equity into their recommendations and then also develop their own set of recommendations uh, as well that were included in the Climate Action Recommendations Report. Um, and I just wanna highlight kind of this overarching sort of not only what is equitable climate action, but what do we mean when we talk about equity more broadly. Uh, next slide. So this is just an overview of the recommendations that the Just Transition Plan Committee put together. And we've adapted, um, I can't say we, because I haven't been part of that process, but Francie has worked with the Equitable Climate Action Team to adapt these recommendations into an equity checklist, which is a resource that will be used by staff in the implementation of the Climate Action Task Force recommendations. And so as we're getting our 2021 planning underway, uh, we're also chatting with folks about how best to incorporate this into the implementation process and how to continue to uh, work with the Equitable Climate Action Team to make sure that as we are doing that implementation, that that equity piece is really a core consideration. Next slide. So all of that really serves as background to identify our priorities for 2021. Uh, which are the areas listed here. And these are really kind of the, the higher level bucket areas that came out of the climate action recommendations report, um, climate change, air quality, electrification and energy efficiency, transportation, waste reduction and diversion and water conservation. And then these pieces of equity and resilience that really will be uh, integrated through throughout all of these priorities. And in a shift from how we've approached our work plan last year, where we had in theory, obviously this is not the way that things uh, played out because of COVID. We had worked with you early in the year last year to identify what your priorities were and then tried to lay out a, a schedule of bringing updates and presentations and things to you over the course of the year around each of those priorities. Uh, obviously a lot of that didn't happen. And then as you all mentioned, some of those things were more comprehensive than I think maybe anticipated and we are trying to, to do too much in each meeting. So we're trying to not necessarily scale back but have a little bit more of a flexible approach this year based on what you all identified as those priorities last year as well as what we know to be priorities coming down from city council, <clears throat> excuse me, around climate action in these areas in particular here and then try to bring relevant items to you um, to review and provide feedback for as those opportunities arise rather than try to have a set schedule so that you have a more of an opportunity to advise city council on those particular items. So that'll be a little bit of a, a process to try to get the timing of all of that figured out and understanding 
what priorities are coming um, from city council, what things might be on the city council agenda that we wanna bring to this group so that you all can provide that feedback um, to city council as well and play, play um, more of an advisory role. And then we're also working with our different divisions and departments to identify projects and plans happening in 2021 that should also come to you all for review and feedback. So um, I'll show you in a few slides here a, a proposed 2021 work plan that shows that kind of more flexibility rather than trying to assign specific topic areas for, to each month. Uh, next slide. So here are a couple of things that we know that are happening this year. So the climate risk and vulnerability mapping, that's one of the projects that we submitted for and received funding for through the Boulder County Sustainability Tax. And so that's really mapping on a, a neighborhood scale uh, existing vulnerability indicators for um, climate impacts. So things like tree canopy and impervious surfaces, age of housing stock, which indicates um, potential uh, energy efficiency areas that may or may not have um, air conditioning, things like that, that might pe put people at more vulnerability for high heat days and poor air quality days and things like that and mapping those across the city on a neighborhood scale overlaid with additional demographic data and things like that. Uh, the county is also looking at doing something sort of similar and complementary around uh, projected climate impacts on uh, a relatively local scale, not as granular as the neighborhood level, but we'll be working with them uh, because that'll be a really complementary piece of information. They'll also be looking at a mapping an online component to that where people can go on and see their neighborhoods and what the projected climate impacts might be. And that their proposal is still shaping up. I haven't seen their, their final project proposal for that, but we'll be working with them uh, in tandem with this project. The electrification plan, so that was one of the strategies that was within the Climate Action Recommendations report was to pull together a committee uh, to develop an electrification plan over the next 18 months to identify what are what's our timeline and strategies over the next, you know, probably two decades or so, somewhere in that, this plan will help identify that timeline of transitioning um, us away from fossil fuels. And so we'll be bringing updates uh, on that to this group as that evolves. Um, LPC is leading that process, but I'll be participating in that as well. The sustainability plan and envision updates that I mentioned a minute ago. And then also um, some new priorities around uh, waste services and waste reduction. Uh, Bob Allen from our operations group and Charlie Caminides, who's come to this group numerous times, who's our sanitation manager, will be going to city council in early February to uh, propose some additional items around uh, waste services for waste reduction, and we'll bring those updates back to this group as well. And then uh, uh, ongoing updates on some of our ongoing programs uh, as those things uh, are relevant. And then one of the things that I wanted to mention is one of the other projects that we had submitted sustainability tax funding for is an, it was a climate equity and engagement position. We were looking for funding for a part-time position to really help us with the Equitable Climate Action Team and the implementation of the equity checklist, as well as community engagement as we get into implementation of climate action recommendations. And then um, the we were approached in terms of potentially revising that to be um, a little bit more broad and support city-wide equity work as well. So we're, we're discussing that and figuring out the details of that currently, which I will be um, keeping you updated on. And the next slide. So I'm also proposing a change to the format and frequency of progress reporting. So currently what we have been doing, doing for the last few years are these quarterly reports that go through all of the sustainability strategies, which are I think 50 some strategies. Uh, that's just more of a status report of each of those strategies and some um, notable highlights. And it's been in a spreadsheet format. It's been um, 
very comprehensive, but but not very easily digestible. And I know most of you have been on the board long enough and have seen those reports. And it's just more of an informational item to this group and to city council where each of those strategies uh, were at in terms of their implementation. That was direction from a previous city council um, that was uh, in place when we adopt, first adopted the sustainability plan. And I think we're far enough along now that we really wanna move towards um, a different reporting format. And so what I'm proposing to council, and this is going uh, next week, is to transition from a quarterly reporting format to a biannual reporting for format. So we'll do a mid-year and an end of year report um, that'll be a much more visual based report and a look more at quantifiable metrics as well as highlights in key areas of things that have happened during that time period rather than just a long list of strategies and what's happening with each of those strategies. And we talked to you a little bit about this with regards to climate action reporting back several months ago was that those reports would then come to you all for review and appraisal and then you all will draft a letter of um, support or recommendation or any pertinent information and feedback that you wanna share that then will submit will be submitted along with that report to city council. Um, and then I wanna to move to that this year, but we'll have a transitional report in probably the March timeframe. So we don't go you know, six months and council hasn't heard anything about what we're doing on climate action, but it gives us an opportunity to say, you know, we're moving forward with implementation of our near-term recommendations. We're moving forward with this new reporting format and here's what it looks like. Uh, so this year there will be three reports um, and then next year we'll really move to that mid-year and um, end of year report format. Next slide. So all of that, um, this might be a little bit hard to see depending on how big your screen is, but I just laid out a proposed 2021 work plan uh, with some kind of known things like, you know, the first of the year we have our general business, uh, the sustainability plan review and this year's priorities. Uh, next month we'll be bringing the transportation roadmap update to you all and the citizen climate um, lobby, which is one of the areas that uh, you all had wanted to look at last year. And again, we didn't have time with COVID. And then starting in March with that transitional report that I mentioned. And then really after that, it, it gets into this a little bit more kind of flexible, as I mentioned, present to like topical presentations or updates um, for you to take specific action to advise um, council on or provide feedback for different plans and projects and things like that. And then there's a couple of other known things in here. So we know the sustainability tax um, application will come out you know, at some point in the fall. So we'll wanna discuss early on with you what those priorities will be for 2022 uh, and then bring those final priorities back to you for a letter of support like we've done for the last couple of years. And then of course in December, we, we don't have a meeting. So um, that's pretty um, kind of the plan in a nutshell. I know that's sort of a lot for folks to digest, um, but trying to hit the ground running in 2021 uh, with hopefully a little bit more of an ability to stay on track this year. Um, you know, fingers crossed that we don't have anything else thrown our way. <laughs> um, knock on wood, I suppose. But the, the one area that I think didn't really get captured in that of what I discussed that you all had marked as a priority for last year was around um, pesticides and pollinators and kind of that natural environment piece. There's really not any component of that that, that came into this list of priorities. So I just wanted to flag that and see if that is still an area that folks wanna focus on that we can build, you know, build that in as well. Cause I wanna make sure that these priorities also align with your priorities as well. If you hadn't said it, Lisa, I was gonna bring that up first. Mm -hmm. Yep. And uh, I have uh, some interesting kind of new um, ideas to, to bring in around that. Um, for example, there's a Colorado based organization that um, develops probiotics um, and it's developed one for breaking down um, uh, glyphosate and another one. For I would like to, um, 
to uh, bring to the city in some way some information on probiotics that can be used for breaking down glyphosate that, for example, could be implemented in a trial at our service center where, you know, stuff gets brought in and then it's ground up and redistributed <laughs> across the city as mulch. Um, and uh, also uh, it may be a trial of a probiotic that could be used for um, the many, many, many beekeepers in the area to sort of, um, to not only, uh, not just be using, um, uh, working with best practices and, and maybe putting in some analysis, um, systems of analysis in for seeing how we're doing in these various areas, but maybe uh, try some innovative new um, ideas and programs. And I think, I'm going to back it up a little bit, though, before we kind of get into some of those specifics, I do just want to kind of check in with folks. Does that approach for the year generally make sense for folks aside from the, the specifics that we might want to get into? Yeah. Yes. James? Yeah. Yeah, I just, uh, one thing that I, I think would be helpful, I, I, I think the approach looks fantastic. When it comes to topical sessions, I think sometimes uh, even when we were meeting in person, you know, like people will have ideas and we're not entirely sure what it is. And it might be good to have some sort of an ongoing process that we're doing. I don't know if there's a message board way to do this or something else where we can kind of propose and consider uh, topics and what we'd actually want to be have presented as a topic. Like, is it bringing somebody in or is there some specific piece of you know, uh, proposed legislation or, or something else that we'd want to recommend and make a vote on, but maybe try to do something that we can kind of work through the topic topics that we might be interested in and a little bit, uh, a little bit more of like a, uh, I don't know what the right word is. Sometimes I feel that it's like, here's a topic, make a decision. You know, here's a topic, we got to decide about it now. And, and my brain doesn't work that well like that. And so maybe something that if we have these topical sessions planned out, we can start some sort of a process where we're, we're like planning out what that's gonna look like a few meetings in advance, I think would be very helpful. Yeah. Well, Annie, Annie's, it seems like you have some. Yeah, and so I just wanted to ask a point of clarification for Lisa, when you said topical subjects, are those, I'm a, I was assuming those are subjects that are on council's work plan and we're working on and bringing to this board to get feedback and review on, not subjects necessarily that are of interest to the board. There may be that as well, but I think there are, you know, a bunch of things that are going forward to city council, like there's the equitable carbon-free transportation roadmap. There's um, several projects that we're hoping to go through the SES review that we would like to get this board's input before going to council. So it would be helpful maybe to get clarity on what that meant and you know, how much space yeah. that takes up in a meeting because, you know, I think if this board really wants to be, um, have the role of reviewing things for city council, that needs to line up with what's on council's work plan and what city staff is doing that, you know, we've been directed to do. So I think it's a kind of a both and answer to that. So, you know, that area, that slide that I had marked 2021 priorities is, is what we know to be council priorities around climate action um, and kind of overlaid with the priorities that this group had identified last year, like I said, other than the really the pesticides and pollinators piece or that natural environment piece. I think we, to the best of our abilities, we, we will be doing that. What Annie is talking about is keeping an eye on the council work plan um, so that we can bring relevant items to this board. I think that we want some flexibility because how the timing works may not always align well with the timing of these meetings and the way that information needs to get to council and how far in advance staff is able to get things on the council work plan. So this year, I'm gonna kind of ask you to bear with me a little bit in, in figuring out how the timing of these pieces are gonna line up. Cause I do think that there's gonna be times in which that will work. And I do think that as to Annie's point, in order to really fulfill the mission of this board as an advisory board to council, that's what we wanna be doing. But I also don't wanna have a, a meeting that doesn't have anything on it if, if we don't have the timing that lines up and given that you all have identified some other areas of, of interest to potentially focus on. 
So that's why I'm asking for a little bit more flexibility. And I would love to try to figure out, um, James, some sort of ongoing process. I think, you know, part of the challenge is there's, you know, there's only so much time in a day, there's only so much time in a meeting for us to um, get into any one topic and decide what you all want, you know, to advise council on or make a decision around. Um, so I think that as we get into this year, part of my job is going to be kind of, you know, figuring out the timing of how to plug these pieces in um, to your meeting schedule as well. So. Yep. I'm not clear what James's proposal is, and I want to hear more about what you're proposing, so, James. Sure. I mean, I, I guess my point is that, like, you know, as an advisory board, what we really want to do at the end of, of any process is have some advice that we want to give to the city council, and that is uh, a lot of times that's over something that they are considering, you know, even if we didn't exist, they would be considering. And, you know, and so there's some policy that the city has that we are going to give advice on, and that's great. Um, there might be other times where we have things that we would like to advise the city council or whomever uh, to also consider, and that that's also great. But I think that um, what I would just wanna make sure is that when we do have these topics that we kind of have an idea of, of like what the end product is gonna be, right. and that everybody involved has enough time to consider what you know their thoughts on that end product so it's not just, you know, you know, like, oh, we're going to talk about X today. Um, well, what is it that we're going to try to accomplish and make sure that all of us kind of feel that as we're coming into the conversation that we feel comfortable with like what we want to like know or ask or say about X. Okay. So can we use an example to, to really clarify this? Like, for example, I've seen the people at Pollinators Action Network present to city council multiple times, and that I don't remember that city council um, had any specific plans or projects that came from that. So let's say that any, uh, maybe you're, you were going to clarify. No, you could finish. <laughs> okay. So what I was, so like, for example, would we, meet with them and ask them to come up with some specific recommendations and then we would research them and then we would put together something that we would present to the city and you know sort of in collaboration with another group um what what are you imagining james and are you imagining that we would chat about it somewhere else like in a message or a workspace kind of like a you know a sandbox of some kind i just want to be really clear about what you're suggesting uh, looks like annie has Thing. Okay, well, I just wanted to clarify on the pollinator piece that I did hear from David Bell today that they are working on a community gardens demonstration garden at Rogers Grove this year, and that's pollinator piece is part of that. So it may be, um, I mean, I don't know if it would be helpful to put that on the agenda to have um, them, meaning natural resources project manager who's ever working on that come to a meeting and talk about that and maybe that's a good segue for the specific topic that you wanted but that's specific to that particular item. Okay but to respond to that um, Annie but that's not a comprehensive city plan for dealing with pesticides and pollinators. Do, do you see what I'm saying? So if we decided we wanted that would we work with that group to sort of create something that was more comprehensive? I, I, I'm you know I'm still I mean I've been here sort of year and a half and I feel like I'm still learning how we get things done. And I guess I'm still um, asking James what you're envisioning in terms of um, a process. I mean, I think that, that that gray area is exactly kind of what I'm talking about is that it's, I mean, I like the idea of having like informational sessions. I think that's interesting, but that's, I mean, that doesn't really achieve the purpose of the, of the group. And so if we do wanna have a session about let's say pollinators, um, then I think, well, I think that we, we as a group want to kind of talk about, well, what is, what, is the, what is the goal of that? Are there city initiatives that we should be endorsing or asking questions about or whatever? Are there specific policies? I, I guess I, I don't necessarily know exactly what it's going to look like. I just, I, I want to make sure that, that uh, we all feel that we know what the goal is for any of the topical sessions whether it's, oh, city council is going to be considering this next week. 
so we want input on it, or um, this is something that we as a group think we should, you know, ask city council to think about or to act on. I just want to make sure that we kind of know that ahead of time and kind of know what the specific goal deliverable is. and goal is at the end. And I, um, yeah, I just, I, I enjoyed a lot of the times that we've, we've just come up with ideas about things that we think are important. I just think as an advisory board, it's important that we actually are finishing whatever that is with advice. So, so it sounds to me like, I'm going to see if I can restate this, James, that you're asking that whatever topics we are pro proposing, we're also proposing uh, specific outputs, specific outcomes um, around that topic. Like we're going to ask that there be, um, you know, an outside group and or city come up with a proposed sort of action plan or that they propose a project or something so that when we set our agenda for the year, it's not just we're generally we're talking about this, you know, um, pollinators in, in July, we're going to be examining sort of an overview of, you know, what's the status of pollinators and we're gonna bring in experts and make recommendations to council. So we have a specific um, outcomes that we're gonna be recommending. Danny, or I, I'm gonna call it. <laughs> um, Adam. Yeah, I was just gonna to add to that. I like the idea of having concrete goals what yeah. I think would also be helpful is having some identified open-ended questions or items that might need to be researched more so that we could use that to inform decisions. I like that. Uh, Annie. So I just want to clarify that there are, you know, other advisory boards in the city. So with the pollinator specific um, topic, you know, it's a little tricky, right? Because um, Natural Resources is working on a project and I don't know off the top of my head, maybe Lisa does what their overall policy is on pollinators, but they may be working on these things and bringing it to the Parks and Recreation Advisory Board. So it's a little tricky about, because sustainability is so overarching, you know, like, you know, where what board might be working on this already. So um, it would be good to kind of flush these things out and. Lisa, I, that. Yeah, I do want to just, I think, kind of step in and clarify a little bit. So in, in the previous years, when we have identified the priorities of this group to set the agenda for the year, the, the goal with that was to bring relevant information and projects and plans that were happening around those topic areas. They, they weren't necessarily just informational pieces, although there were, there were times in which this group and some of that was when we had previous members, but they felt they wanted um, more information about a specific topic area before they felt like they could make a decision or a specific recommendation to council on that. But the intention has been in that approach to bring relevant information about what's, what the city is doing to this group in order to provide feedback to council on, yes, we support this direction, or we think this piece is missing, uh, or we'd like to see more of X in, in this particular um, item. And one, just, I, I feel like 2020, just, I sort of got kind of blown up in terms of our, our attempt to do that. And with the focus on the climate action recommendations report that really dominated the time that we really did have in 2020 to get into some of these things. So this approach isn't necessarily asking you guys as much to say, what are the areas that you're interested on in that you want us to just bring information in on? It's more, what are the areas that, that you feel like are your top priorities that we can then bring again, because there's only so much time in the day, there's, a, you know, the city has who knows how many projects and plans on the agenda for this year, we need to have some sort of way to filter what comes to this group in order to provide um, useful feedback on that then goes to city council. So we're, we're trying to do, like I said, a little bit of a dance to figure out how and when to bring those to this group, again, also based on council priorities as, as Annie mentioned. But I don't also want to say, 
you all can't then focus on other things that may not be part of that agenda because part of your role also is to be able to say, hey, maybe the city isn't doing enough around this particular area and we wanna make sure that that's on city council's radar. Um, if, if, that, if that makes sense. I know that doesn't quite speak to Jim's thought or proposal around having some other kind of process for sort of tracking and seeing some of these things through, because I, I agree it's a lot to just say, you know, this meeting's focused on this, we bring it to you, you make a decision, and then that topic is kind of checked off the list for the year, because it's not, that's not quite how things work. Um, and I do also want to be clear that this is an advisory group, but that staff, that, that any direction from this group needs to go to, to council in the form of a, of a recommendation and then council, if they wanna take that up, then direct staff to do the work. Um, so I do kind of wanna be clear that, that this group doesn't necessarily direct staff on, on what to take up, but it has to go through kind of that, that channel, if that makes sense. And I wouldn't necessarily anticipate this group in particular, unless you all you know, have the time and capacity to be doing a lot of outside research on certain things. Like that's fantastic if you all have the time and ability and the expertise to do that. Um, but that kind of the, the more clear cut role is providing um, your feedback and technical expertise on the things that, that the city is doing that's being directed by city council. I think Jim, did you have a comment? First, sorry, Mary Lynn. No, I, uh, I, I just, I, yeah, I think that mainly what I want to make sure that I am is useful, and I, I, I think that just making sure that I kind of understand what it is we'll want to accomplish on a specific topic is my main, is my main concern. Um, I, that, that's, I totally agree. I just want to make sure that when we do have advice to give, that I actually feel like I'm being useful in the advice that I give. Yeah, and one of the things that we started putting together too um, that I think will be helpful um, on that is, is a memo that goes with your packets that will be more explicit of what's coming to you and what we're asking you to do with that information, um, which I think will be, and I, that was not my, my idea. I can't take credit for that, but I do think that it's a, a great idea to help set you all up for understanding what are we accomplishing in, in each meeting. That's wonderful. Thank you. Well, so then the question comes down to me is how much is this um, this board a proactive board that is um, sort of analyzing the scope of sustainable um, issues and setting agendas and recommending those to council and therefore to be recommended to staff? And how much are we um, a reactive and responsive board? And I think that that's, a, that's sort of like a dynamic tension that I've been um, not clear about since, and it, maybe this is what you are part of what you were trying to say, James. Yeah, Heather, do you want to jump in? Yeah, if I can just clarify, um, it might be helpful for you to go onto the website and review the board's um, parameters, what the board's are, function is in the city. Um, I know we have brought that to this board in previous meetings and stuff, but it would, would be very helpful for you to um, review that information. Also, um, next time a board orientation is brought before you, it would be a very helpful thing for you to attend that meeting just so that you can kind of understand what the function of an advisory board is for the city and what your role and responsibility in that regard is. Thank you. Yeah, Adam. I was just going to follow up on Heather's point. Uh, a former board member, Cody, suggested this new uh, board orientation member, um, or this this new board, this new orientation program. Uh, do you have a sense of when that might be offered this year? Uh, I believe it's coming in February. I can send you the dates for sure, but I believe the next one is going to be in February. Okay, great. Francie. Um, I actually, I'm presenting at that presentation. I believe it's February 8th, so it's going to be early February. Awesome. Thanks. Are there other thoughts on this topic? Um, it's, it sounds like Jim's request is, you know, for more information ahead of time, it's being handled uh, 
through the the memos at, with our board packets. And so it, Jim, it's given the thumbs up. All right. <laughs> OK. Um, Lisa, did you have anything else for us? No, I think I think that that's it. If you all feel good with that approach and and feel um, like you, like I said, could give us a little bit of grace and patience and trying to you know figure out how to best do this, we'll we'll work to make sure we're getting you the right information at the right time so that you can provide good feedback. The um, the topic of of pollinators is I agree with Mary. I'd I'd love to. Um, if we can squeeze it in sometime, <laughs> it'd be, that'd be good. Well, because it's so tied in with the um, pesticide issue. Yeah. It just seems like it wraps in a lot of, a lot of terrain that we haven't gotten to. And again, I, I do want to put out, I, um, I, I have read the board packets and I do understand that we're in large part responding to um, city council need, but I would like to know um, with greater clarity how, um, how, how much this group feels that we um, can be sort of proactive in, in the questions that we ask that we would like to see. I, I mean, I think I wanna put that out there. Would this light board like to um, put out specific questions that we would like to see addressed in presentations in a study session on pollinators and pesticides? So you, just to clarify, the suggestion would be that um, we send in questions to the presenters ahead of time. Uh, you're, we, on. Okay, you're on mute. That we as a board decide what we would like to see addressed and that we generate sort of questions and sort of an ad agenda for um, what we would like to see focused on. I'm wondering if that the board would feel that was appropriate and useful. Jim. I mean, I, I've kind of felt like that we, at least in the time I've been on the board, I've, I've felt fine asking questions. I guess one of my things I run up against is something that Annie brought up, is that for uh, for every one of the things that we think about, there are so many different parts of the city that are already working on it, um, that I think it's important. I mean, this is where, this is where Lisa and Annie and Francie and others kind of like hold our hand through some of this stuff, is that there, for any of these topics, I think it's going to be very important to uh, to kind of have the existing expertise kind of formulate the framework to begin with. You know, like I, I don't feel that I would be in a point right now, for instance, to to, to tell anybody about about what what aspect. I don't know. I'm, maybe I'm not expressing myself well. No, I hear I hear your point. I think what you're saying is we need to know what other people are doing first before we decide what to focus on. Um, I was going to say, I, I think my thought on the idea of us coming up with things and requests and, and asking what we'd like to talk about and what we'd like to learn about is, uh, I feel like it's going a little bit down the wrong track, just as we need to be respecting the Longmont city staff's position and their needs. And again, city council, what city council needs first, what the city of Longmont needs second. Um, if there is something that is has been brought to their attention. They're like, hey, you know, we have someone who would like to present on this. You know, are you guys interested? I think that's more the way that things need to be feeding as opposed to us kind of saying, I'd like to see more on this. And yes, that sounds really interesting and I'd like to learn more on it. Um, if that's the case, then I think we need to go out and look for the presentations ourselves online and learn about it online. And, you know, if it's useful later, come back to it. But, um, I, and I don't know, I'm, I feel like this is where it was going. Is this the right question? Am I going the right way, James? No, not really. <laughs> but I was gonna say, I, I, in a nutshell, I would say to answer at least Mary, Mary's question about should we be, can, can we be suggesting topics that we should be talking about? I think unless there's something directly related to that topic that's going on within the city of Longmont and with the sustainability program, it's probably outside our bounds. Does that make sense? Yeah, Jim. I, I, I mean, I, I think I agree with that. I think, um, I think that, yeah, I think I do. I, I agree with that point. I think that, um, you know, at least I do see our role as being here to be like advice for the city staff that are working on a lot of things already and that already kind of understand the framework. 
And I guess in, in my experience, I, I have felt like I've been able to bring up concerns on these topics. Um, and we do have, I'm not opposed to, to having some more like uh, board directed openings, I guess. But I also feel that it's really important that we um, accomplish all of, the, all of the topics that the city staff need us to deal with as our top priority. Yeah. Um, and then see what, what, is, what, what is left after that. And I wanna say I have no opposition to learning about new topics myself at all. That was not to say I don't. Um, uh, and, and I was gonna to say too, Lisa, I have a memo that kind of said, this is what we'll be reviewing and this is the goal before that. I think would I would hope that would at least address some of James' concerns from his question a half hour ago. <laughs> no, <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I was gonna say, I think I think if we try and stick to at least working on what the, the city needs first and what the council needs first and if you know, if, if other things come up in discussion and they're good points, that's great. But also I want to keep in mind that we did we did start a climate action task force and their job was to brainstorm the ideas to focus on. And our job is probably more so still just to judge them. That's not the right word, but you know, it's Evaluate. sort of the right word. <laughs> not judge them, but provide the recommendation on, you know. Yeah, but but we weren't we weren't hired as the uh, the the brainstorm task force. So, although we often kind of take that role a little bit too, and I I don't think that Lisa or anybody really minds it all that much sometimes when we go off off topic. Um, you know, I guess anyway, I'll go on mute now. <laughs> Out of <laughs> yeah, I agree. Sustainability is such a broad area, and there's so many interesting topics like. Could easily imagine being kept busy for a very, very, very long time. To get some constraint in place, I think it's helpful to know what the asks are from council. And what I think would be helpful, is there any way we could have some sort of feedback from council to know how our advice or any action items that we pursue is being used? And if it's helpful, if there's anything we can improve? I said oh. that, Adam. Yeah, so a couple of things. I mean, we do have a council liaison, Polly Christensen, who's who's not on the meeting today, um, but she's really our, our conduit to the priorities for city council on bringing information back from this group in particular. Um, so there's that two-way communication in place. Uh, as we get into this reporting, the reporting piece, which will be a little bit more formal this year, there will be, like I said, you you all will be able to review the report that staff put together and provide information that'll go to council, essentially that, you know, says, yes, we think this direction is great, or we think something is missing, or, you know, we think staff is moving too slow, or, you know, staff needs more resources to do X, you know, that could be a number of things that are included in that. Um, and I think that the that that will be a little bit more direct in terms of, of the response that council has to that information coming from this group. And then beyond that, it, it sort of depends on, on what, what the focus area is and what level of input you provide to council. So a really clear example is back when the city implemented the curbside composting program. This group was very influential in providing um, and an opinion to city council saying, yes, we think the city should pursue a curbside composting program and we think it should look like this. Like that was very influential to the city council's decision making around whether or not to pursue the curbside composting program, which we now have in place. So that's a really clear example of when an initiative is being uh, discussed by staff that the feedback from this group is, is really um, powerful and same thing you all provided really comprehensive feedback to the climate action, action recommendations report and all of that was was very much part of council's decision making in terms of how they were prioritizing the what strategies became near term and midterm strategies so it's not as clear cut um, but it, it's a little bit varies depending on kind of what the situation is but I think there's some um, I, I will do my best to make sure that if there's specific feedback from council on the feedback that you all are providing, that that, that, that is brought back. And some of those things are going to be more direct. Like I think when we get into 
um, like the transportation roadmap that'll be coming to you in February or the electrification plan that this group will um, be very supportive in terms of council's decision-making process on how or what of those plans they end up approving. So they do very much take the, the, the opinions of this group into consideration. Thanks everyone for that great discussion. I, I think that where we've landed is we're keeping things as is. <laughs> um, I will move us on. This is the fun part. <laughs> um, I, does anyone have other business that needs to come up? Staff, hey. are there any items for the staff? Oh, sorry. Charles. So, so, so these are, are you, is this the uh, board items, items from the board? Not yet. Is that what you're asking for? Oh, not yet. Okay. <laughs> Got it. It's next. Hold on. <laughs> uh, staff is. No, oh, luckily we don't have anything <laughs> else. Okay. Charles. Yeah. So this, this actually connected a little bit with something that Lisa brought up in her presentation. Uh, so one is just a point of clarification and then another kind of these things about being proactive about items. So um, there's a goal of being 100% renewable in terms of our energy mix at some point, I guess, 2030. And uh, I don't think we completely control that. I think part of that's up to the Platte River Power Authority maybe. And, and so, which is <clears throat> not just controlled by Longmont, but be interesting at some point to learn uh, how we influence that, you know, how the city of Longmont influences that and how we can help with achieving that goal. Um, I actually don't know, <laughs> be interesting. And then a, a concern I've actually had just uh, studying recently, in fact, it came up in your presentation, Lisa, about uh, uh, decarbonization, the fuel mix, et cetera, oh. over the next couple of decades. And I actually think that this transition is gonna happen much faster. And the, we're going into the exponential adoption curve for renewable energy as uh, wind and solar becomes so inexpensive. And what could happen is two things. One is, um, for example, uh, community-owned power could um, basically, um, uh, uh, what's the right word, <laughs> build out uh, wind and solar, for example. But um, because it's residential power is becoming so inexpensive that uh, there may not be demand for public utility or that much demand for public power because public power both has to generate and they have to do transmission. Mm -hmm. So we could end up with hundreds of millions of dollars of, strand, of a stranded asset um, that's community owned and that is not financially sustainable, which is part of, I think it might be part of sustainability. So anyway, that, that is one of the things at some point, I don't know if there's ways for us to provide input on that if the city thinks about these kinds of things, but uh, there is an exponential adoption curve going on um, with the continued reductions in the price of renewable energy that in some ways we could do great things. Platte River could put in more wind and solar, but we could, uh, if we're not careful about how we do that, end up with hundreds of, again, hundreds of millions of dollars of, of, of a stranded asset. So I don't know, that's my, one of the things that's been on my mind recently that maybe we could comment on uh, for the city, et cetera. I have a comment related to that. Go for it. Um, Charles, I agree with you. I, I think that we're moving into a position where uh, there's a, a sort of a, a creative tension between um, a distributed um, and decentralized um, uh, uh, power provider provision. Um, and a lot of that is um, the residential adoption, like in the um, microgrids that Tim Sheckley presented on to city council. Um, I would very much like to be um, in a, in a um, trial project of something like that in the city of Longmont, in a state like Colorado, especially, um, where the cost of solar and the cost of putting in something like a microgrid and the expertise for being able to do that is becoming very widespread. 
um, we could end up with a stranded asset. And this is a case, again, I'm going to repeat the question, um, how much does this board want to be proactive and how much does this board want to be reactive? And since we're talking about what we're doing in 2020, I would like to add that along with pollinators and pesticides to um, one of our question areas. And now I will mute. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, Lisa, I think you had a comment. Yeah, just to capture that, sorry, Mary, when you said you wanted to add that, can you clarify to me what your that was? Um, I, I want to explore Charles's question um, about uh, future planning for energy um, and uh, in um, centralized and decentralized um, options. I want to see, I want to, I want an update on where the city is in terms of exploring that and to see if this board might have something proactive to offer in terms of so, sort of some study questions or strategic um, planning questions. Great. Um, so I, I think that I don't want to get too far into responses. And so this is, this is kind of an area that I do want to, to maybe put back to this group of how you want to propose this because we kind of, this is where we get into that area where folks feel like they need more information before making a decision on something. And we don't, I, I think that it's an important piece of information um, to understand uh, how, what's our relationship with Platte River Power Authority and how the influence that we have in terms of meeting that 100% renewable energy goal um, I think that ties in with the integrated resource plan that Platte River Power Authority just put out a couple months ago. Um, so this is an area where if people feel really strongly that we need to have a, a study session or a meeting that's focused on more of the informational side of this. That sounds like it might be important. So I wanna ask you guys if that's something that you wanna do. Um, and I'll put that to you all to, to vote on because that, that Although that ties to some of those priority areas. Yeah, Tim from, so we do have a rep from LPC uh, on here, Tim Ellis, I'll let him chime in in a minute. Oh, well, I'll let you chime in first, Tim, and then we can bring that question back to this group. Yeah, no, I think that's a, a really important question and we certainly can provide a lot more information on that relationship. But I just wanna let Charles know, just as a, an organizational setup, um, both Mayor Bagley and Dave Hornbacker, the executive director for LPC, are both on the board of directors for Platte River. So we have a direct input into the plans and, and how we're going to meet those goals on, on the highest level. So just throwing that out there. And, and of course, if there's any uh, additional informational sessions or anything that's needed, definitely will be available to do that. Great. I feel like typically we have a few sessions a year where uh, PRPA comes, comes in with some presentations and updates on where they are with the renewable energy. So that might be a Another, another place to kind of ask the questions um, that you do have and uh, give them a chance to actually provide some, some real feedback on it. Um, you know. it's, that, just, that would be, oh, sorry. <laughs> quick last question. So Charles, would you be willing to um, formulate the questions that you, would, you think would be useful to have answered in a study session on our behalf? Uh, sure, yeah, I could definitely do that. I've been kind of studying this for a little while and um, and, and, and one piece, so I think that's one one piece that would be very interesting. And I, I really like the idea of defending against uh, in the city investing in what ends up being a stranded ac asset. Um, and maybe there's other things we can invest in in terms of, um, you know, for example, uh, you know, the residential um, power generation and things like that. Microgrids. Well, one thing, right. So uh, electrification is one of the one of the pieces that's on our priority list, and it, if we think maybe even just four or five years out, but especially 10 years out or so, uh, electricity is gonna become amazingly inexpensive. Um, what are we gonna do with those electrons? Um, and so there might be all kinds of things we could do and some of them related to, uh, to equity, um, food, all kinds of things that we could do. So we, we could be very aggressive. So that'd be, that, I think that'd be a wonderful topic if, if the board would be interested in discussing that. Adam, I saw your hand up a minute ago. Yeah, I'll just say I enjoy this topic as well. I would love to hear more about it. I did have a follow-up question to your presentation, Lisa, if it's possible just to ask one quick question. Yeah, of course. 
Yeah, I really appreciated the progress that you provided. It's like really exciting. What I'd like to know regarding the water reduction, is that just reducing the water usage in Longmont or is that also considering programs to reuse gray water? I'm gonna let Francie jump in on that one. She's our water conservation and sustainability specialist. Yeah, that's a, a great question. So um, the goal was established in our 2004 wa raw water master plan and its main goal is like the overarching goal is 10% reduction um, but in our water usage by our, our projected planning build out, which is just before 2050. Um, so there are a number of current action items and that's guided by our water efficiency master plan. Um, so currently um, gray water is not an included um, action item in our water, uh, our water efficiency master plan, which was in 2017. I believe um, gray water is listed um, as a potential action in the future in the sustainability plan. Um, we have not yet pursued it, um, primarily because our main focus right now is looking at um, land use and um, water efficiency integration. And that is a primary focus of staff time and working a lot with our planning department. Um, that doesn't mean we won't look at gray water in the future. It's just not a priority at this time. Thanks, Francie. Uh, Mary. I believe that it was included in the, um, uh, Adam, uh, for the board to look at it, was included in the um, climate action plan that was presented to us in last summer or in the fall um, as a priority um, as for residential landscape and gardening use. Francie, do you just want to jump in on that one? Yeah, so there was a climate action task force recommendation um, that um, was, so the original recommendation, and I do want to note this one, I'm going to say the original recommendation and then the staff modifications, this was the most extensively staff modified, um, but the original recommendation was a very high level recommendation with the overall goal to reduce water consumption by between 30, I think it was between 35 to 45% by 2025. Um, so that is a very ambitious and goal. And when we went through the evaluation process for a number of different reasons, it um, for multiple different categories um, fell lower on the ranking. So based on that combined with feedback from this board as well as water board um, and our Parks Recreation Advisory Board staff provided the recommendation to City Council that instead of pursuing this very ambitious goal, um, that when we do the next Water Efficiency Master Plan update, which would be is due in 2024, so we'd probably begin the process in 2023, we would do a much more extensive evaluation of a more ambitious water conservation goal than what we currently have to kind of bring some uh, more detailed information to city council on what a more ambitious goal might look like and what may be more feasible for the city. Um, so that, that, so it's not currently, we're currently, so in the near, near term, until we do that update, we're, we're going forward with implementing our current water conservation programs and then kind of that more extensive uh, research on more extensive programs um, will kind of probably start in that 2023 timeline. Great, thank you. So, Lisa, I feel like you, you had an action for us and I've lost it. Do we need to do something? Oh, it, it was just, if you all want me to to set up an informational session with PRPA and LPC on power provision and the integrated resource plan. I, yeah, um, folks, others? I second that. Yeah. Okay, anyone have a- I would like it. All right. Yes, we would all like to learn about that. Great. Okay. Yeah, Mary, did you have something else? No, I just hope that Charles is going to have his uh, questions articulated about that maybe prior to the session 
it would save a lot of time if we could just get those answered all at once. I think he did a pretty respectable job of beginning to articulate them in this meeting and I nominated him to think for us in that regard. Well, thanks, I would, I would love to be able to talk to Tim, for example, maybe, and, and work together with Tim even with, with working on some of those questions if, if Tim would be interested. Sure, yeah, of course, uh, any way I can help. Um, what I was going to ask is, do you want something that is kind of summarizing what Platte River is planning in regards to the IRP, the, the resource planning to reach that 2030 goal or what they have in place now? Because they, they agreed on one of the, the options in the IRP. Do you want them to kind of give a an explanation of that and how it's going to work? Or did, if you have other questions that revolve, I mean, regarding like microgrids and community-based um, uh, resources, which is part of the IRP, but if you want to um, have them maybe talk about that aspect more, you know, it'd be helpful if, if they got some direction as to what they're going to, what, what you guys would like to hear about. I, I would love to hear just, yeah, how they work, what the strategy is, um, so microgrids, I'm trying to remember, is that the same thing as like virtual power plants where you tie together residential power generation into a, a uh, with an energy management system and doing yep. energy arbitrage yep. and things like that? Thinking that you can have virtual power plants with, with microgrids or any grid. It's just, um, you know, resources that can help manage in a flexible grid. Um, it can certainly work in the microgrid, and that's it's probably really important in a microgrid because you have limited resources to work with, so you really need to manage them um, very closely. So I think, but the virtual power plant, we're developing what in in some regard a virtual power plant with this uh, water heater program we're working on now, where we can call upon water heaters and manage them to align with renewables or to cut peak down. But that's virtual power because we're not generating power, we're managing the, the consumption on it. So yeah, I think the, the, the virtual power is, is gonna be in a lot of places. So, did you get your question answered, Tim? Well, more detail would be good because we, I have to, we would, uh, Lisa and I would have to pass something along to both Dave, my, you know, director, my executive director and to Platte River to so they know what what were what everybody's expectations are. That's mm -hmm. to, to set specific expectation because there's limited time. We want to get to the point quickly, and we want to be able to have people on the line that can answer the questions more most appropriately. Well, it sounds, Charles. It sounds not not to ask your question for you, but it sounds like you were asking about distributed versus um, centralized, and uh, planning for um, uh, uh, um, sort of like cost and um, capacity um, levels as, um, you know, planning, the, the sort of like the 10 year strategic planning and what kind of forecasting information is included as that strategic planning is ongoing. Yes? Yeah, that's definitely, I, you know, I could keep going on many, many questions, but that's one of the big central ones. Um, so, so maybe I could you know, think of my questions and even solicit the board and then, um, you know, talk to Tim about those and maybe refine them so that uh, we can keep that presentation uh, from Platte River Authority uh, focused, but. Perfect. Yeah, Tim. If I could, one more, one more point on that, uh, specifically if we're talking about distributed energy resources, Platte River Power um, has hired, in conjunction with all the, the, uh, the cities, has hired a consultant to do a distributed en um, energy resource study. That's ongoing right now. Uh, so that's going to be answering, I think, a whole lot of your questions, and it's going to give us, you know, uh, uh, some kind of direction or options as we move forward. But right now, it's in study phase, and that study is supposed to be wrapped up by May June timeframe. So I think that may be um, a resource that can help answer a lot of your questions. But I think if you want a discussion earlier, there's no problem in, in trying to. We could do it all at once, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, if you want to wait till the end, we, you know what would be a, a really good, I think, a, a plan is to let's wait till the end of this distributed energy resource study in, in May or June and present on it and present the results on that and how it lines up with the IRP. Then it'll give you a really good framework on an understanding of what they and the cities are envisioning as a whole regarding the distributed versus the centralized power. And I think that that would make sense. And then we can we can strategize 
trying to get to that action piece of, I'm sure at some point that'll be then presented to city council. So this, it would be an opportunity for this group to provide feedback that then goes to city council along with that study. So I think that that approach makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I'd like to get this board uh, information as soon as possible because they to get better input, they need to absorb it and think about it a while so we can really get their ideas as part of what we're what options we're going to kind of bring to the city council as well. So the earlier the better, but 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 we would have to wait till the results are coming out in that May or June time frame to just start that process. I think. Yeah, that would be fantastic. Yeah, Francie. I just actually sent this to Heather, but um, Platte River just opened up two more virtual um, DER strategy workshops oh. um, if any board members are interested in attending. So I sent it to Heather to send to the rest of you all. Great. Thank you. Okay. Um, one last. Yes. Okay. So s since we've dealt with one of the two areas that we've uh, identified, um, that we wanted to delve into more fully and we, we did that quite expediently. I'm wondering if this board can come up with our sort of uh, questions and things we're interested in around uh, pollinators and pesticides and just send them to Lisa and she can decide how to structure and when to structure um, uh, uh, bringing that to us. If we could just sort of do that in the email or does that work? Does that violate open meeting laws? I don't know. Um, it probably does. <laughs> What's your thought there, Heather? As long as you do not have more than two members on any uh, email or something, you would be able to avoid that. But as soon as you get three people on there, um, you have an open meeting and it is not allowed. So my recommendation would be if you want to do it is for everybody to email their um, questions to Lisa and to me and we can kind of collaborate with um, Annie and make sure that we get them concise and then we could present them to the board as a whole to discuss during one of your open meetings. Thank you. Uh, Mary, I'm tempted to nominate you to write our questions for us as you <laughs> nominated Charles. <laughs> Turning my I second that. <laughs> yeah, I'm absolutely up for that. And I even have some folks that I can recommend that might be useful to bring in to speak, like the PP, the uh, People and Pollinators, and uh, Tom Theobald. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, Jim, did you have some? No. Okay. I was just okay. giving a thumbs up. All right. Awesome. Um, count, I, I'm moving on in the agenda. Uh, at, 502. Um, okay. Council is not here, so they will not have any items. Um, uh, information uh, that was submitted with the, or sent with the packet. Um, are there any questions about anything that um, came? Okay. Uh, does, would anybody like to motion to adjourn? Sorry, my mute button is actually on a different speaker over here, so I will motion to adjourn. <laughs> I will second that. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Have a good Thank one, guys. You. Thank you. Bye. Take care, everyone. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Until next month. <laughs>